SummerSlam is Saturday night, and it's going to be in Detroit. And did they really have to get Kid Rock to perform? Of all the fucking people, did it have to be dumbass Kid Rock? It had just been Eminem and called a fucking day. Would that have been so bad? Would that have been so difficult, so hard to do? Haven't we seen Kid Rock's stupid ass enough over the years at WWE events? Hasn't he sucked enough air out of venues in the past for this company and their shows? Do we really need to go down that path once again? Whatever. <laughs> you know, and I'm at this phase with WWE where I really don't watch a lot of their television. Monday nights, Friday nights, it's very little to none. And I'll come and I'll watch the premium live events and usually enjoy it. And for the moment, I don't see any reason to get away from that. Like, why would I force myself to start suffering through three hours of Raw every week and two hours of SmackDown every week? And at the end of the day, let's be absolutely clear, it's largely suffering. You know it is, and I sure as the hell know it does, too. Um, but it's SummerSlam. It's the big event of the summer. Unless you're talking about All In in a few weeks, which is obviously going to be a really big event too. But this is a big event for WWE. And I have to say, I don't know that I really feel like it feels like a big event. Looking at this card, it is certainly a bit underwhelming. Now, one thing that really stands out to me is Becky Lynch and Trish Stratus, their match isn't going to happen at SummerSlam. Sure, it's going to end up as a future main event on Raw down the road. They've invested months into this shit. These are two of the highest profile women in your company's history. And to not find a spot on the card for them is fucking ridiculous in my opinion. And to the WWE, you're seeing the reports of, well, they felt the they wanted to have some match discipline and they really care about the timeliness of the show and the flow of the show. I am a total fan and advocate of that, believe me. However, I come back once again and say, when you get to a show like SummerSlam, you should be planning that well enough out in advance that you know who you're building that show around. And in the grand scheme of things, you didn't need to have a fucking Charlotte Flair match on this show. You could have had Becky Lynch versus Trish Stratus. I'm just saying. You know, there are probably other matches you could have bumped from this. Like Ronda Rousey versus Shayna Baszler, MMA rules match. You're trying to force us to care about it, but at the end of the day, you know we really fucking don't. You assume Shayna's going to win and you keep it moving and who really cares, right? You got the SummerSlam Battle Royal. Do we really need to have that on this show? Yeah, I get you're trying to get as many people on the show as possible and give everybody a payday, you know, could it be too much to ask at least to have L.A. Knight win this fucking thing? Didn't he win his match against Sheamus last night on SmackDown? Well, that usually means he ain't winning the fucking Battle Royal, so if he's not going to do that, then who the hell is? Like, if you go uh, come out of this Battle Royal and you don't have L.A. Knight win that motherfucker, then this is just WWE once again exercising their right to cut off their hand to spike their face. That's all this shit is. They have no other reason to not have them win it other than they just fucking want to troll the fans and they want to undercut their own talent because that talent didn't get over in the way that WWE planned or expected or wanted to. Period. There is nothing else you could say. It is LA Knight and 24 other jabronis at that point. And if anybody else wins that battle royal over LA Knight, it is fucking stupid and it is yet another indictment on WWE in terms of they will intentionally undercut their own talent because they're fucking idiots, that's why. Um, I am curious to see how Ricochet versus Logan Paul goes. This actually has some history. I'm actually kind of interested in this, believe it or not. You say, a Ricochet match, you're interested? Yes, I am. As I think Ricochet and Logan Paul could do something you know, on this show. This could actually be a very good match and you actually have kind of a reason to give a shit about it, which is the first time you can really say that about Ricochet in a long, long damn time. Now, it also serves up well because Logan Paul needs to win this damn match. 
Can't keep having Logan Paul lose. He's got to beat somebody. Let it be Ricochet here. Perfectly fine with me. I'm sure the Intercontinental Championship match between Gunther and Drew McIntyre is going to be really good. It's going to be physical. It's going to be hard hitting. Other than the stupid incessant chops that I think are lazy and I fucking hate when wrestlers do them. Because everybody fucking does them now. Other than when I get past that annoyance, like I expect this shit to be look legit, look believable, look real, be the type of match that I really enjoy. I just wonder, like, are they going to have Gunther go down here? I would. I'm not going to have him beat the Honky Talk Man's um, reign as longest Intercontinental Champion, but that's just me. I'm a troll like that. But I expect Ricochet Logan Paul to be pretty good. Unless something drastically goes wrong, I expect Gunther versus Drew McIntyre to be really, really good as well. Uh, the WWE Women's Championship triple threat match, I could give a shit about. Asuka, Bianca Belair, eh, we'll see, but Charlotte Flair is in it, so it's automatically going to suck. Anybody that tries to pretend like she's any fucking good knows they're wrong. She fucking sucks. She always has sucked. She always will suck. You know, the whole intrigue at this point is, is will she show up with a new face on Saturday night? Gives a shit. Uh, the World Heavyweight Championship between Seth Rollins and Finn Balor. I, I'm assuming Damian Priest still holds the Money in the Bank briefcase. I would think the only interest at this point is whether or not Priest is going to cash in. I, I would think that would be the only question here. That would be the only appeal here. What are you going to do? You're going to have Finn Balor beat Seth Rollins? I, I mean, shit, stranger things have happened. I guess they might. And then have Damien Priest cash in. Um, but again, like a world title match, that'll probably be decent. I just won't care a whole hell of a lot about. And I'm still trying to figure out. And, and, and I agree with you, right? Over the past few months, I have not watched a lot of WWE television. But I am still searching for the reason that Cody Rhodes and Brock Lesnar is a thing. Why is this a thing? Why has this been a thing? Why does Brock Lesnar hate Cody Rhodes? Why are these two going at each other? Why are the fans supposed to care? I mean, why are they supposed to care? I'm assuming this is going to be the blow-off. And if it's anything like the blow-off to Bobby Lashley and Brock Lesnar, it's going to absolutely fucking suck. I doubt it'll go down that path, though. I guess you have to assume Cody Rhodes would win here. I'd be surprised if they didn't have Cody Rhodes win here, which is always going to be a ugh to me, but it's whatever. At the end of the day, though, the biggest thing that's got me tuning into this show is obviously the main event. The Tribal Combat Match for the Undisputed WWE Universal Championship. Jey Uso, main event Jay, that no good traitor cousin, who even his own damn son doesn't believe is going to win on Saturday night. That's a good young man right there. He knows the truth. He knows Roman is the Tribal Chief. But I will tell you, I wonder... If there is any possibility of this being the end, I doubt it. It would feel odd. Although, if you were going to have anybody end the story, end the reign for Roman, the most logical person, honestly, is Jey Uso. And if you told me that this meant that Cody Rhodes wasn't one to do it next year at WrestleMania, sign me the fuck up for that. If it's got to happen at some point, it best be with Jey Uso... Not goddamn Cody Rhodes. God, I couldn't imagine. But I expect that match is going to be a storytelling bonanza. It's going to be fucking off the hook. And, you know, there is at least because of the way the last match went down and Jay pinned Roman, like there's at least that thought of, hey, this is the only dude to pin Roman in like three years. Tag match or not doesn't matter. It could happen. It could happen. And that alone has me hooked for Saturday night. Because while I don't believe it's going to happen, there is a chance. They did plant that seed. There is a little bit of doubt in my mind. So we're going to see what happens. I assume that this is another one of these shows like we've had several times this year for WWE where my energy level, my excitement level is incredibly low for the event. And then as the show actually happens... I, I find myself at least mildly entertained. It's probably going to be the same thing here. I don't really look at this show right now, though, and see that it feels like it's going to blow me away. I think you've got a couple of potential stinkers on this match, some pretty good stuff. 
You know, but if they like start off the night and don't have LA Knight win the Battle Royal and, and it just all goes down from hell, that could certainly be a possibility. So let me know what you think is going to happen at SummerSlam. I guess we will find out Saturday night. All right, I'm out.